Yeah, there we go. Look at Batman. He's styling and profiling. Yeah, but he's late. Late, late, late. You're not going to get away with anything like that, man. <laughs> Good morning, Benjamin. How's it going, Robert? Good to see you guys. Good to see you, brother. How are you, you doing, and all man? Your, all your listeners here. Uh, dude, I didn't recognize you, dude, without being on stage and doing the thing. Yeah, well, I'm all cleaned up today. <laughs> he's a Benjamin, yeah, Robert. Well, you know, you know how it is, Robert. You know how that goes, Robert. Hey, man. Got my after morning yeah, or after look weekend Look at me, here. right here. Dude, everybody's all over the stage. What was that guy? It's the, uh, Jeremiah Johnson. You remember <laughs> Jeremiah Johnson back in the day, dude? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, it is Monday morning. Benjamin, the excitement's in the air. We're getting ready for my big four-year anniversary Bachelor Roof Saturday night at the Martini Bar. Now, you're no stranger to the Martini Bar. You play there quite often, right? Yeah, I? yeah, yeah. I have an English uh, cover band called Mixtape, and we play all over San Antonio every single weekend, Martini Club being one of them. Uh, so it's a great, great place over there. Uh, great staff, and uh, it's a nice little venue, actually. I think I, I think the name on the marquee says uh, it's the best kept secret in San Antonio, <laughs> uh, which is right because I had never heard of it before we started playing there. But uh, they have a nice a nice crowd and a nice little dance floor, and again, it's just, it is a nice little best kept secret type place. But you know what, Benjamin? I used to use that line on you guys. <laughs> La Fuerza, San Antonio's best kept secret. La Fuerza. You know, you're stealing my yeah. line, dude. Well, the secret's out now. <laughs> Benjamin, you're from Este, Nebraska. Yeah, I'm from Nebraska. Let's, let's take you back, way back, way back in the day to the Nebraska days, Benjamin. Well, let's go back, Robert. Let's go back. <laughs> yeah, let's I was when, uh, when it was little Benjamin. Little when Benjamin. This is a little, yeah. So I, so my story starts back in Omaha, Nebraska. I started playing uh, professionally with my dad's band about ten years old. And so we, we had, my dad had a family band. We would do all the weddings and you know anniversaries, everything up there in the Midwest. We would travel all the time. And, uh, Nebraska, Iowa, Colorado a little bit, um, and every weekend, I and mean, that's honestly, it's what I've, I've told you many times, like if I'm not playing on the weekends, I really don't know what to do with myself because I've been doing that since I was about 10 years old, so, so I started up there, and uh, of course it wasn't Tejano music up there, it was Mexican music. Tex-Mex? Not even Tex-Mex. Like you're not? Just, 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 we called it Mexican music. Mexican it, music. It, it was in Spanish, I mean, now, granted, it was a little Joe and, you know, a mixture of all kinds of stuff, we just didn't know it was Tejano music up there. Sure. Yeah, so it was, it was, uh, but it was pretty good. Uh, it was funny. I credit um, one of our, our drummers uh, that that had come from from San Antonio uh, up to Nebraska. It's a family up there, so he was playing with us, and he's the one that kind of introduced me to Jay Pettis and David Lee and the Tough Band, Jesse Sarrat, all those. He had all those cassettes, and he would always listen to. We, we you know, we coming back from gigs, and he would, oh, you gotta check this one out. Oh, you gotta check this one out. <laughs> and he would, and he would say, this is the only he's a man down in San Antonio. This is, you know, they have it going on, and so that was kind of my first little. Oh, okay, so there's there's more than just Little Joe and and La Sombra. Oh, Benjamin loved La Sombra. <laughs> Benjamin, you know, Benjamin loved La Sombra so much that one Halloween night when he was a kid, he went dressed up as Gavino. <laughs> <laughs> The chaps and all. <laughs> he loved Gavino. Benjamin loves Gavino. <laughs> yeah, and I used to see them on uh, on Johnny. See again, you know, one of the few shows that we got up in Nebraska to to see that kind of music was Johnny Canales. So you know, the bands that were on there, that was that was all we got. You know, so of course, someone was on there like every other weekend. It seemed like Benjamin. How hard was it up being up in Nebraska? It's not like today when you can download music and do whatever you're doing. But back in the day, uh, being in Nebraska, how hard was it to get a hold of? Mexican music, Tejano music, up there. What was yeah. it? Was it available? It's you know they had like one record shop. I think that would kind of just again they would get their stuff from Texas or wherever. And um, it, yeah, it was really really few and far between. I mean I mean it was probably they would think there was maybe uh, one shop in town that sold uh, you know homemade tortillas and uh, maybe some some uh, some of those uh, camisas from from. Uh, from Mexico and some, maybe some pots and then of course you know a little section with some tapes. <laughs> it was a, it was all in one type of shop. It, it was no record store or anything like that. Geezer, man, they even had those soccer shirts. <laughs> Bimbo bread. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I take it that in your mindset it was I want to go to the to the to the, what do they call it the uh, Tejano music the capital the of capital Tejano yeah music. oh yeah yeah you yeah. wanted to come to San Antonio you had to come to San Antonio yeah. You can call it like your destiny, your dream to be well, the Well, so you know, again, so back when I would, when I would, again, guy, you know, the drummer, he would show me all the, uh, all the, all the tapes from from Texas. You know, uh, with me, I, I'm really into history all the time, and I'm always into kind of like, uh, you know, what's the history behind everything and that kind of thing. And so I, I would, I would look at those tape cassettes and the, you know, the tape backs, and kind of, I would read all the names that were, you know, sure, associated the credits with it and all and, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I was, I was kind of already, you know, I had heard of. 
uh, you know, the different clubs that these places that be, and they would fill, you know, they would uh, record these live albums at, and, uh, you know, um, all the names, the producers, Gilbert Velasquez and Jerry Lerner. I would see those names over and over and over and over and over again, so I'd always think like, hmm. You know, it seems like, the, again, it's the same people that are, that are producing all this stuff. So when I came here to San Antonio, I knew a lot of those names. And so as I started, in, you know, as I started meeting these people and, and getting into the industry myself, I kind of already knew who they were as I was meeting them sure, and talking to them. Sure, so, sure. so to me, I, I would always tell people, you know, it, it, and it, I think it's true for even even today in Tahoe Music, you see a lot of artists coming down from uh, Michigan and you know uh, up north and whatnot. Sure. And and I think you know you've seen a large uh, uh, explosion of, of folks that that are trying to get into Tahoe Music because. When you're not from here in Texas, you know, you definitely hold it at, at a different, you know, level than, uh, you know, let's say the, the folks here in Texas where it's, 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 it's always here. It's always going to be here and it's just... We're very spoiled. Exactly. It's, We're it's, very spoiled. You know, yeah, it, it, the people here are lucky. You've gotten, you know, you could have the Desperados play for your wedding if you want to or, you know, things like sure. that because they're, sure. they're, they're local here sure. to San Antonio. Sure. But uh, up there, yeah, not so much. So, you know, we did look at the artists as stars and we looked at the, uh, you know, the people in the industry as you know, hey, those are those are great producers and, you know, Grammy Award winners, all that kind of stuff. So I, I think it was, you know, I held it with a little bit more uh, reverence, I guess you could say, when I came when I came here, when I first came here. So eventually you came to San Antonio and right away, man, you wanted to attack the market. You sure. were ready. You know, you were ready. Well, and I will say I went, you know, by way of Arizona because I did, I did move to Arizona and well, I, before I came to San Antonio. Well, you know, let me just say this, you know, and I'm going to give a shout out to Eddie DeLeon from Arizona. Let's not even talk about Arizona. Okay? <laughs> I'm just playing with your brother-in-law, yeah. And there you go. I'm just talking to your brother-in-law, dude. That's family. That's family. Good morning. Shout out to Eddie DeLeon. Good morning, Arizona and the Casa también. Fatima E. Gutierrez, there we go. Let me see here, let me scroll down back here a little bit. Let's do some good morning shots. J.D. Bolillo Gonzalez in the casa. Good morning to J.D. Hilda in the hosa. Cynthia Gonzalez Ramirez. Ramiro R. Rodriguez. Aida Ramirez. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Many, uh, many, ah, many Flores come in. Joining me from the valley. There we go. Olga Herrera, San Antonio, Texas. Good morning. Anyways, este, uh, so Benjamin, you come to San Antonio by way of Arizona, by way of Nebraska. Now you're here in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. Did you come here with a game plan already, or just like I, I don't know what's going to happen next? I did. Now I will say I came probably very naive, like most young artists at the time. I was about maybe 21 at the time when I came down here to San Antonio, and uh, so I thought it was going to be the cities were going to be paved with gold and <laughs> accordion players hanging from the trees. And <laughs> Not even. And and I got out here, and it was it was a little bit different than I thought it was. Not so much. I mean, again, granted, there was a lot of opportunity. It's just that there were so many bands, and everybody was busy, and it was so hard to get a, a band going out here because everybody was playing with with everybody, you know. Uh, and so a lot of opportunity for talented folks. Um, and so I was I was lucky. I, I, again, I came with the plan of we were going to start kind of continue the band or half of the band that we had in Arizona. It was called Redline. And we played quite a bit out there in, in, uh, in Arizona for, for all the folks that are maybe listening from Arizona. There we go. The Bronco Billies days, the, the Baja <laughs> Chili <Bronco> days. <laughs> yeah, there, there were some pretty decent clubs out there that there we would we play. Go. I mean, we were quite busy out there. So when we came out here, it was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then quickly, you know, it, it, there was just so many bands out here. It was just like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> we're trying to get something going. It was tough. But I ended up hooking up with, uh, with some guys, again, that were trying to start up. And they had been in bands before. Uh, one one guy in particular, La Fuerza, the band itself, was actually started by uh, a guy named Pete Gutierrez. Is, is it called, called him Tiny. I'm okay. sure you probably know him. He's a bass player. He's played for you know Eddie Gonzalez. I think right now he's played with Sonny. He's played with Sonny for quite some time. Um, you know, uh, he's played with practically everybody. But at the time, he was he was he's also a young guy, and he was starting the band actually. Um, and, and actually, it was it was his band that said, that he started with, with with some of the original guys there. And the name of the band was La Fuerza. It was already a name band. Wow. What it was is actually our guitar player Edgar. He had moved from from El Paso, and I had hooked up with him, and we were trying to get him in our band Redline. And so we were kind of just trying to get that going. And uh, he, in the meantime, he was telling me, "Hey, I'm rehearsing with this other band called La Fuerza, and they don't have a singer." He says, "So why don't you go ahead and uh, um, come on down and see? Maybe you want to sing with these guys." And I went down there, like I said, it was a bunch of young young kids. Yeah, well, actually, I say kids because literally some of them were still in high school, and uh, you know, Gibby, our keyboard player, and a couple of these guys. They were young, 17, 18 years old. But eventually, you took it over. Yeah, eventually, you, um, you know, so the guy, some of the guys left, and and the manager at the time, you know, asked me to kind of take it over and and see what I could do with it. He, he said, hey, well, you seem to know kind of what you're doing. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, I've been playing Styles 10. So I learned a lot from my dad. I credit a lot to my dad, you know, Ben Midan, the senior. He's, he's, uh, 
He's uh, the reason why I do what I do and, uh, and, and why I've been able to do it for so long because I, I learned a lot from him just from a business standpoint and the management side of it and how to keep a band running sure, and that kind of thing. Sure. So, so yeah, so uh, the manager kind of gave the band to me to run per se uh, and uh, you know right away I said, okay, well he's fired, he's fired. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cleaning the house, you go Ben, I'm cleaning the house. Good morning, shout out, I got to Benny, let me come in. Uh, Mr. Joe Gonzalez, good morning, good morning, good morning. There we go, shout out from Omaha, Nebraska. There, there we go. Yeah, I guess D.D. Reyes, you go. good morning. Yeah. There we go. Good morning, Bad good morning. combination in uh, Los Rios Band. There you go. Now, Ben, eventually, you know, it's really, really weird. I've always said timing is everything. Eventually, uh, me and you cross paths. Yeah. You know, well, a faithful, I was introduced to you. evening. And uh, it was on a, on a nice, fruitful evening there at the, at the, where was it? At the, where was it, Ben? What did we mean at? I think it was at Graham's, I want to say. At Graham okay. Central Station Central. here, and somebody introduced me to you, and and then um, they said you were looking for somebody to help you out, and definitely you needed some help, you needed some direction, and I was that person in a sense I didn't know at the time. I said, "Well, let me see what I can do with you guys." And lo and behold, um, I kind of like uh, took over your your booking, your management, mm -hmm. and things started kicking off. And like, before yeah. you know it, La Fuerza caught fire. You it, guys were kicking ass. It, it was good. Uh, I mean, it was right at a time where, again, like I said, the band was we had already started a demo. You know, we were kind of already on the road to, uh, you know, we're trying to do some professional things. So as I kind of took over the band, there was a couple key things that I wanted to make sure we accomplished. So right off the bat, we needed to get a professional, you know, demo going. So we were already in the studio with Gilbert Velasquez and right. Jerry Del Rosso. Again, going back to those names that I remember from, you know, when I was a kid. Sure. Um, so we were in good hands musically. I also knew that we had to have good representation and we right. needed either a promoter or manager or something, someone professional, you know, to, to kind of take us and, and guide our our sure. career and our bookings on kind of sure. that that's where you came into play so when we hooked up with you it was perfect uh and i think we i think you were that was right you were right off of uh starting your own thing because i remember you were i had just started being catalina going to capital on, emi you were with the with EMI land, that was catalina records mm -hmm. and uh, like i said i was very blessed to have met benjamin and and to this mm -hmm. new project that i started working with ben miranda y la fuerza and i gotta tell you and i've told ben this and i'll i'll i'll, I'll tell anybody out there this which was that timing is everything and i'll say that again I've always said if Ben y La Fuerza would have been here back in the late 80s, early 90s, these guys would have exploded yeah. on the Tejano scene like other bands were exploding because Tejano was on fire. Yeah. It was king, as they say. Yeah. You know, you caught on at the tail end yeah. of what was going on, but yet you guys were still doing actually very, very well out there, man. We did. I, you know, again, going back to cause just kind of the, 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 the naiveness of, uh, of coming down here, I, I had no idea there were... Uh, radio charts and like all that kind of thing. I mean, I just thought, hey, well, people are playing music, and but there were there was a whole industry down here. I mean, there was movie, you know, TV stations and record labels and all kinds of things. And, then, and of course, that's that's what you introduced us to. So, right, uh, you know, you got us on the charts, and I mean, right. uh, you you were you were doing your job as far as you know, getting us all over the place, getting radio play tickets yeah, on the road. And, 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 and I will say to a lot of the bands and musicians out there that are still trying to do this stuff, you know, it's very vital that you get professionals in to do what they need to do. Yeah. If you're a band and you're wanting to play, you, you gotta get somebody that's gonna book you. You know, if you're not already established and people don't know, you know, know who you sure, are. Sure. And same thing for radio play. You gotta sure. get, you gotta get somebody out there to promote your stuff and, and get it in the stations. And, and and that's the way it works. I keep on telling people that I I tell many many bands that they drop the ball. And what I mean by this is this, Ben. It's one thing. To put your money into uh, doing your recording is one thing, and to putting your money into manufacturing your product. Yeah, yeah. But you can't forget about promoting your material as well, sure. putting money into it to go on the road or talk to people, whatever yeah. you need to do. That's vital because if you're going to put that to the side, kiss it goodbye, man. Yeah, I mean, what good is it? I mean, you could have the best beer in the world, but hey, if it's not on any commercials <laughs> or in any bars, I mean, hey. hey man. <laughs> I tell people, I tell people, what are the, tell me some of the top products you see on TV, you'll see Coke. Budweiser, Miller Lite, yeah. Pepsi, Ford, Chevy, whatever the case. And you see them over and over again, and they're big. Yeah. But you know what? They keep on promoting it because they know people will Marketing. forget you in a heartbeat. Absolutely, yeah. They will forget you. They will. Yeah. You've got to promote your product, man. That's what it's about, man. That's and even about. music. Even music. Yeah, so, absolutely. And even more so, it was funny because these guys were not playing whatsoever when I took them over. Yeah. And before I know it, I come, hey, man, I got you over here. Hey, man, I got you over there. Yeah. Hey, man. And before you know it, man. These guys were exploding. I was getting them gigs. But it's one thing, and I will tell Ben this, it's one thing I can put you up to the batter's box. you got to swing the bat. Yeah. you oh got to yeah. hit the oh ball. Yeah. They, yeah, All I can true. do is put you up on All stage. All you can do is give us the opportunity. And, that's, and that's then from there, there you got to take it. And they took it. Yeah. And they ran with it. And they were kicking ass. Now, tell you what, Ben, let's go ahead and take a break in the action. And let me go ahead and play one of your, one of your biggest hits yeah. off your first CD called... Illusion. 
Number and five Jonas, on the charts. Number one we, in your hearts. Number five with a bullet. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. I'm here with Ben Miranda of La Fuerza, a.k.a. Mixtape. That's right. Good morning. You can tell the people here. We're off to your... Good morning, shout out, good afternoon, let me see DJ Edward Castillo, Leroy uh, Urbaso, there we go, Magdalena Cervantes, DJ Edward Castillo, Leonard uh, Alfaro Alvarado, Angel Anna, there we go, there you oh, go. good morning, there we go. Wow. <laughs> I give everybody some shout outs. 